Welcome to today's video. Uh, what we're going to be looking at today is a short tutorial on how to create a clock face in Lightburn. And we're going to be using the variable text feature coupled with the array function, the circular array function, create our clock face that you can burn onto wood using your laser uh, and turn that into a clock using a cheap mechanical uh, a clock face. So without further ado, let's get uh, to Lightburn. Okay, so we're just going to open up Lightburn here. And so today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at creating a, uh, a file that will hold our data, which is going to be an Excel CSV file, and then coupling that with the variable text function to place that text in our clock face. So first of all, what we're going to do is going to create our Excel spreadsheet. So I'm just going to come here. Okay, so just ordinary Excel. Okay, so with CSV text, uh, and with the variable um, text function in Lightburn, what it will do is it will read values per column depending upon the code we place in that variable text. And I'll show you how that works. So I'm going to put in three entries here. This one's going to be like our numerical clock face, so one, two, three, four, like we normally would see. I'm then going to put in uh, Roman numerals here. Yeah. And then finally, we're going to put in actual text labels for our numbers there, so one, two, three, four. So I'm just going to do that now, um, add these in, and I'll speed up the video. Okay, so I'm going to put Okay, so now that we've got the text labels in, we're going to save this as a CVS, uh, CV, CSV file. So I'm going to come down to common delimited and put in here clock. Okay, and that's our file. So now we no longer need that, so I'm just going to reduce that. So next thing we're going to do is move on to designing our clock. And so I'm going to start off first of all by throwing a small circle and just hold down Control Shift to get a symmetrical circle here. And I'm going to just put that on a line. And I'm going to move the circle onto a cross section here. So we want to kind of keep things nice and even and lined up so that everything looks symmetrical. So next thing to do is to add in a text label. And this is going to be our variable text placeholder. So with Lightburn, to denote something as a variable text placeholder, we start with percentage and then referencing the column that we want to start with. And in this case, 
our column was the first one, which is zero. Okay, which as we might remember is the numbers that we had there. Okay, so what I also need to do here, I'm just going to move this down so I can see the screen a little bit better, is I'm going to change the text format from normal to merge CSV. And that's going to note that as just a CSV text space. So the next thing I'm going to do is come to our variable text uh, panel here. Open that up. And we can see here we've got an option to browse for our CSV file, which I've got here. I'm going to open that up now. And what it will do is it will automatically indicate the range of values that it sees, the range of rows that it sees that it can read from, so 0 to 11. So importantly, the we want these details to be 0, so 0 offset, content 0, start 0. Okay, make sure all those are all zeros. So what we're going to do next is select our text, select our circular central point, and then we're going to move to our circular array. And I'll explain a bit about this here. So with the circular array, um, you've got a few options. First is start and end. So this is the start point of your circle for your circular array. So zero degrees and then the end, which is a full circle at 360 degrees there. That'll give us a full circle. Step, we don't want to worry about that. We're going to leave that at 45 there. And the center, we're not going to worry about that because we've got our center as the circle. Uh, these options here, use last selected object position as center. So we don't, it's all right. we can see what it will do is it will try and center around the midpoint of these two selected here. We don't want that. We want it to use the central point that we created. Rotate selected uh, object copy. So what we can see here is each one of these entries, these percentage zero signs, are rotated according to the central point. Now for our numbers clock, the first clock we're going to be doing, we don't want that. So I'm going to take that off. You can see they're now horizontally aligned. And then auto increment variable text to one. We want to leave that as that and click OK. Now, nothing looks to have happened other than creating the copies of our variable text placeholders. What I can do here is in our variable text panel, though, if I click on test, you can see that shows the values now being read from that uh, CSV file we created earlier. So test there. Um, now what I normally like to do at this point is deselect the central circle and then with all of these numbers selected here and I'm just going to deselect that again and I'll put them onto a blue layer. And then this way I can change my font if I want a different font for these uh, numbers and you can preview them by clicking on the test field there entirely up to you um, i'm going to leave it on arial for the time being and once you've selected the text uh, the uh, font that you want what you can do is click bake and that's going to then transform those uh, text characters to paths. So these are no longer text characters, these are actually paths now. I'm just going to click on, on um, one of these numbers and select a node tool. Um, oh, actually, you can convert to path there. Okay, so they are still numerical characters you can still change okay there we go 
Okay, so that is a basic clock face, and you could stop there if you really wanted to. Um, you can uh, drill your hole, burn that on to a round clock face, but we're going to take it a little bit further. Um, what I like to do is add in minute markers between each numeral. The way I'm going to do that, we're going to select our circle again, Control D to duplicate that, and then Control Drag to resize that. And I'm going to put that circle around about the middle of the numbers there. Just give me an idea. Coming back again to our circular point, I'm going to Control D again, holding down Shift this time so I can just drag that along the Y axis right up to the top. Just place that nicely on the middle of that line. And I'm going to reduce that down a little bit there as well. And then place that on its own layer as well. So that is our minute marker. So we're going to then use the circular array tool. So select both. Circular array. And rather than have them on the hour, we want 60 minutes in our plot. So I'll go 60 and OK. So what I then look to do is with each one of these um, minute markers that fall on the hour, I'm going to delete that particular minute marker. So delete that one, that one, that one and so forth. So I'll just speed up the video here whilst I do this. Whoops. There we have it. So we've got our minute markers there as well. Uh, so the next thing I'll do is take that circle and again holding that control I'll just expand that out and that is going to be the outer circumference of the piece of wood that I would cut um, on the, uh, the wood. So that gives me my um, block face there. Now if you wanted to decorate this further you can certainly do so. And you can do that by either adding a picture. Um, I like geometric shapes on my clock, so I'm going to draw myself a, a square here. Fill that in. And just sort of manipulate this a little bit. Get a nice diamond shape. Convert this to a path. Okay, and this is just simple shape editing. You don't, you know, using the nodes tool here, even for midpoint, um, adding in a node, and then just a little bit of manipulation here of those nodes. Create a bit of a pleasing shape. There we go. And what you could do, make another group. Central line. Alternately, you can uh, do the alignment tool, and then just again create another array. So here, uh, what you'll find is it'll pick up our sixty copies. We don't need sixty copies; we just need twelve, and then rotate those accordingly. And then that provides you with a nice face there. Is, um, 
burnable at uh, the printable bin. Okay, so that's the really that's that's the end of the process there. What I do want to show you though, if I move that across to one side, and we we'll just very quickly create another clock because I want to show you how you choose those other um, formats on your clock. So we're just going to quickly create our text object here. Now, again, we're going to go start off with percentage, but rather than zero, I'm going to go to the next column over, which is column one. OK, and select here the merge CSV. And again, just going to create our array. Oops, not the there. Okay, and because this is going to be the um, Roman numerals, uh, I do want to have that auto rotated. And you'll see how that looks here. Ah, so the thing you need to be careful of is if you just come back here and see how this has now changed to offset four. So we're going to reduce that to zero. Always make sure that's zero. Select that. Create your array. And you should find that's your Roman numeral there. And again, you can go through the same process of adding in your, um, your details and so forth. So. So I hope that gives you a bit of an idea in terms of what you can do to create blocks in Lightburn. Uh, once you've got your template worked out, it's just a matter of mapping out your cuts, cut your material. Um, what I have found is that with a lot of the um, clock mechanisms, the spindle is not very long at all. So you do want to make sure that if you're doing, say, like a wooden clock, for example, that you recess that quite well. Make sure that that spindle's got enough length to get through the wood to put the handles on. Thank you very much for your, uh, staying through and watching the video. Um, if you've got any other comments or queries, certainly uh, don't hesitate to let me know.